Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna finally have a look at the top 20 roll and write free games that in my opinion are the top. So uh, this is my personal uh, list so you might disagree probably will but that's okay everybody has their own opinion so we're gonna have a look at mine so I decided to do 20 because uh, first plan was to do 10 but most of the games on there uh, were games I already talked about on the previous lists so if uh, any of you are returning viewers you already seen those lists and you already know those games are good so I wanted to expand the list to include some uh, games that I haven't talked before on the top list and uh, yeah, I played a whole bunch of games, so it was uh, really hard to narrow it down to 20, but um, somehow I managed. I think uh, it represents what I feel about these games. Um, uh, this is my third annual list, so uh, I think my channel first started to grow when I published the first um, top 10 list of roll and write games, so two years later, and here we are with the third annual list. All right, so we have 20 games to talk about. I'm going to keep it a bit shorter because there's more games and I'm going to keep it uh, uh, even a bit shorter for the games I already talked about so we can talk a little bit more about the new entries into the list. And uh, yeah, let's open this book up with a whole bunch of roll and write games and see what's inside. All right, and first game today is Volt, a solitaire dice game. So this is a very new game to me. Um, I maybe played it a few times only, so it's brand new, so it might be a cult of the new thing where it's uh, just something new and shiny, but uh, I think it's a very excellent game. Um, it's a game where you're trying to use the dice to cross off the numbers in here, so you can uh, add and subtract dice to create the exact number that you need and then cross it out. If you fill out a whole row or column, you get the gems in the vaults, but the vaults lock. So every turn, one of these locks will lock until all the way until turn um, 12, when the last lock locks and the game is over. So you're trying to collect as many as you can. You can use some skimmers here that's gonna help you manipulate the dice and you have some rerolls. So overall, quite nice game. It creates this feeling of um, chase or race, uh, between you and the locks while you're trying to finish the rows be before it locks and uh, maximize your score. So quite nice game, very new to me. Keep in mind it is on the bottom of the list, number 20, but this is uh, 20 out of um, 160 games that I tried. So still very good game. Try it out. This is Vault, a solitaire dice game. All right, moving on to number 19. This is Egyptia. So in this game, you're going to roll all these bunch of uh, different dice and you're going to place them in this grid that's going to tell you what uh, kind of structures you can build inside here in the desert next to oasis and you're going to have some uh, scoring conditions which do come on separate cards that you're supposed to shuffle and pick but um, you can easily roll for that just looking at the document or the uh, printout so you don't have to really make the cards um, so this game is try you're trying to build the structures that are going to maximize your points depending on those scoring conditions so this is a quite um, nice and well tested mechanic where you have different uh, scoring conditions each game and then depending on that you're going to think of a strategy that you want to use and go into the game and try to maximize the points so we see that as Prolopolis and uh, uh, Sagrada and stuff like that. So, uh, well-known mechanic, uh, well-liked, and works very nicely. So, uh, this game, I found it to be uh, uh, very strategic and very enjoyable, and uh, yeah, if anything of that sounds like nice, it's Egyptian-themed, so that's a plus for some people. So, um, but you do have all these dice and, as I said, cards, so that might be a little bit of a drawback, but definitely worth um, the additional printing and uh, gathering of components. So try this one out. This is Egyptia. And next up, uh, number 18, this is Terraforming Dice Duel. So this is a very nice roll and write representation of the Terraforming Mars, which is a very popular solo game. Um, there's been other re implementations of the Terraforming uh, Mars, but um, I don't think any of them really come close to the Terraforming Mars, which is a really nice engine builder. So usually all these um, adaptations 
create the game that kind of resembles terraforming Mars, but they just kind of ruin the engine building aspect. And then you don't have that same thing where you're uh, building something and then it starts giving you back after you build it. And the more you build, the more stuff you get at one turn. Um, this game does that pretty well. Um, not perfect, of course, because it is kind of a, a scaled down version of uh, terraforming Mars, but it, it does really work very nicely. And for a dice game, roll and write game, it's quite excellent. I really like this game. So uh, you will roll some dice and you pick out some of these uh, uh, things you can invest in um, and uh, some things that will, some events that will happen that might uh, actually help you <laughs> if you uh, plan uh, right, but uh, maybe even hurt you. So uh, you play out through the game and then see how well you did. And uh, that's basically the game. Um, so if you like um, the idea of terraforming Mars as a roll and write game, this is this is the one to try. Um, there has been others, as I said, but uh, this is probably the best one I tried. So I definitely recommend this one. This is terraforming dice duel. Next up, we have number 17, and this is abstract paint by number game. So in this game, um, you're trying to roll the dice and then fill out these squares with the colors or numbers, if you don't have colors, to create um, the shapes and patterns that you need to score as much as you can. So again, we have the uh, idea of choosing different um, scoring conditions for the game, which affects your strategy, just like we talked before. So again, this works nicely here. And this game really reminds you of Sagrada. So putting the numbers or colors and uh, filling out the scoring patterns, which some of them are very reminiscent of Sagrada. So overall, uh, works really nicely, very fun game, very strategic game. Uh, if you like Sagrada, you will like this. Um, it's not quite as uh, intricate as Sagrada, but for a roll and write, a really nice substitution. So if you're going somewhere, you want to take Sagrada with you, too many dice, this is the one for you. So try this one out, this is abstract. Okay, next game on our list, number 16, this is Extra. So this game is basically, you know, the mechanic from Can't Stop. And there's been many other games, well, not many, many, but there's been a lot of games that have been implemented the same uh, mechanic where you're uh, rolling uh, several dice and then you're picking pairs to choose which number to advance towards a um, certain goal. So Extra is probably the least exciting of those, but definitely the most accessible when it comes to finding it and printing it and playing it. You can find these free recreated sheets on Board Game Geek, print it and start playing. Um, so definitely not an exciting game as the rest on the list, but uh, very much strategic, tactical, very much more serious kind of game where you're uh, definitely trying to maximize as much points as you can. So definitely a game that feels more serious and, and clean. Very strategic and interesting game to play, but also very fun. So even though it's very small and very minimalistic looking, it's definitely fun and enjoyable game. And uh, that's why it's on my number 16. This is Extra. All right, next game. This is number 15, Roll and Cook. Uh, I really love this game. So this game is um, so strategic, so tactical, and uh, it's just very nicely designed. Work, Everything works really well and so much fun. Um, it, it was on my um, highly recommended game uh, playlist, which you can check out right there. And yeah, it's been there for a long, long time. I definitely enjoyed this game and I think everybody should try it. So uh, you're rolling and every turn you're picking one of these ingredients depending on what you rolled or you can pick one of the basic ingredients from this uh, hexagons here. Once you get those ingredients, you can spend them to cook these meals. And depending on the meals you cook, you get points. So more meals you cook of one kind, the more bonuses you also collect. And that way it creates a really nice strategic puzzle on what to focus on. Do you get uh, easy ingredients to make easy meals? Do you get these harder ones, which are worth more points? Do you focus on just one to create a lot of bonuses? Or do you spread it around depending on what ingredients you have? Because it's very hard to collect just all bunch of cheeses cheeses and jams to create pizza. <laughs> so um, very nice game. Um, play this a lot always enjoyed it always fun it's been on my highly recommended list so it is highly recommended and this is my number 15 that is roll and cook 
All right, moving on to number 14. This is Nine Lives. So this is a game where you're a cat and the cat has nine lives, so you have nine turns. And each turn you're going to pick a different cat, which in itself is very fun because every cat has vastly different um, abilities that you can use. So you're trying to fill out these upgrades so you can get to certain upgrade here like the uh, potion or the shield. Um, or you can use the dice to move in the... Um, dungeon and if you step on one of these items that you unlocked then you get treasure chest which are worth points so stepping on these items and moving through the dungeon doesn't really help you unless you unlock it and so basically you have to do both but how much of each do you do is a very hard decision to do so it creates a very nice puzzle and also here we have end goals once more and these are uh, much harder to achieve, some of them, some of them are more easy, but so it's not quite as prevalent in the game as in the other ones we already talked before, but all this moving around and uh, unlocking and collecting points uh, is a very fun activity, and as I said, cats and different, different kinds of cats with different abilities makes this a really fun game, so this is my number 14, Nine Lives. All right, let's go on to number 13. This is a old classic game, well-known, well-liked, 30 Rails. So the game where you build train tracks and try to collect, connect stations and collect as many points as you can. Um, yeah, this game, um, everybody knows it. Um, it's very well regarded, everybody recommends it. So, but um, what most people don't know about this game, it is it does have a lot of expansions. So first of all, uh, there's the advanced version where you don't have these overrides, but uh, instead you're trying to collect the uh, shares by crossing out the uh, certain spaces in the map. There's also river expansion, which adds a little river that you have to build bridges across to um, to get over it. And then there's uh, the factories. Um, I don't know what that expansion is called, but um, oh, it's called XL, so extra large, where you can draw uh, train tracks even in these grayed out spaces at the edge where you usually can't. And then there's uh, factories that you can add in that you also try to connect. Um, I usually play with everything together, which creates a huge massive game that lasts for a long time and uh, um, a lot of things to consider and play and makes it really complicated. But I play this game so much, <laughs> so um, um, yeah, I basically got... Uh, you know, I know how the game works, I know the underlying strategies, and I can usually score really good in a basic game, but when it comes to a uh, challenge, uh, I just try to throw everything in there and just play like that. I will leave the links for every single expansion there is, so you can try it all out. Um, very fun. The basic game alone, quite fun and enjoyable, but um, if you play it a lot, it might get a little bit repetitive, just throw in the extra expansions and uh, you'll have a blast. So definitely try this one out. This is 30 Rails. All right, next game. This is number 12, uh, Dice of the Living Dead. So this is a game where you're trying to move from one spot through this track all the way to the um, end. And you do that by rolling a bunch of dice. And some dice give you good stuff like ammo or movement or supplies and some dice are bad which can be zombies that attack you and stuff like that so um, you're trying to roll the dice manipulate them change them to what suits you best pick out the ones you want to keep which ones you want to try to get something better and uh, move on through this map with um, as few victims as possible and get to the end with at least one survivor so it creates a very nice adventure kind of game where you're trying to just travel through the area get to the end while all the stuff is happening to you and of course you have these uh, like the mall and abandoned house where you can stop and then something happens in there and then you move on so it's a very nice it creates almost uh, its own story it's not a story driven game but it gives you a sense of like an adventure with its own story developing um, zombies of course not as popular as they used to be back when this game came out but still quite enjoyable game especially for like halloween that's when i did my playthrough for uh Halloween special and uh, yeah, I'm quite enjoying this game and it is on my number 12 so definitely try it out Dice of the Living Dead Alright, moving on to my number 11 this is 1572 The Lost Expedition uh, so this is one of the games from the XX72 series of Roll and Ride games mapping, 
roll and write games where you draw the map as you go through the um, terrain. So what is special about this game is this is the first of the series. So other games are more streamlined, they're more alike to the modern games. But this game being a little bit on the fiddly side, not everything's quite as polished, it, it gives you that 80s kind of old school adventure kind of game feel, which is a uh, very nice uh, it really gives you the sense of adventure so going through this map um, you have to collect movement points to progress from one to another which could take several turns of rolling so it, by the time you get close to the end it's going to be over an hour it's going to be a epic long adventure so it, it really gives you a sense of this old school kind of an adventure game and which is very nice for a roll and write game to create that so as i said even though it's not streamlined and quite as polished as the other in the series um, i highly regard this one as one of the best of the series so definitely try this one out if you're in a mood for a epic adventure game kind of with the old school feeling but you can look past the um being not being so polished and streamlined as modern games usually are. Uh, 1572, The Lost Expedition, definitely check it out. All right, so here we go with the top 10. So on number 10, we have Everest 1924. So this game really surprised me. I really didn't expect much because it's very simple. It's just one sheet and a few dice. Looks very simple in its appearance, but what a fun game this is. So um, basically, I think the most fun comes from the dice manipulation. So you can pretty much do anything, um, add, subtract, um, put pairs of dice together to create a new number. And what you're trying to do is create a sequence of uh, numbers like one, two, three, four, five. And that's what you need to progress up the mountain, up the Everest. I think the theme, um, although it's not very strong, it comes through very nicely and it really draws you in. Um, and for some reason, I don't know why I'm attracted to climbing Mount Everest as a theme, but every game I tried about climbing a mountain just really, really sits well with me. So I don't know what it is. Maybe I have some um, primal... <laughs> Maybe I have some primal urge to climb a mountain, but I don't know why, but it really really works for me so um, let me just show you like if you roll six dice and you need to make a sequence let's roll it so sometimes you'll just roll and here you have a sequence of two but um, sequence of five and uh, this sequence would be the highest number times the number of dice in the sequence so that's 30 so you can climb the next level if that's the uh, value that you need you have the re-rolls uh, you can use every turn, so even the dice you already used and the dice you haven't, you can reroll all of those. But then you have to get that number that you need. If you don't, you have to go down a level. And uh, every time you make a move, you're moving closer to this edge. And if you get to the edge, you lose the game. So um, very nice dice game. A lot of manipulations create really interesting puzzles, really tactical moves that you have to do. And as I said, the theme really works well for me. So this game, quite a surprise for me, and I love this game. Definitely try this one out. This is my number 10, Everest 1924. All right, next game here, my number nine, this is Giftbringer. So this game was also quite a surprise. Um, I just wanted to find some print to play games to play for the Christmas time. Um, then I got too lazy and I didn't get any, but I already downloaded the file, so I tried them out and didn't really expect much. I mean, it's uh, something uh, about moving on the map, map delivering gifts. Um, the game does look wonderfully, but it plays really well too. A very fun game. So first of all, uh, you have to roll the dice and then use the dice however you feel. So you can use them to move along the map. So for example, if you have to use a five to move along this path to the next house, um, then you can use a two to deliver the gifts into the house. But you also need to use the dice to unlock these Vikings here. So for example, this one needs a one, four, and any die to unlock it. Why you need to do this? Because you can't deliver the gifts unless you have the gifts already unlocked next to the Viking. And once you unlock the gift, you'll get whatever gift there is. There's uh, milk, there's um, cupcakes, and there's cookies. And you have to put those down um, next to the Viking 
because he took those gifts. So moving along the map doesn't do anything unless you unlock the Vikings. But unlocking the Vikings doesn't do anything unless you move along the map, deliver those gifts and collect the rewards. So it's a very nice um, puzzle there also. Uh, how do you use the dice? Because you only have certain amount of turns, certain amount of dice. So creating this balance of uh, unlocking the Vikings and moving across the map, delivering gifts, that's going to give you the most points at the end. Um, very nice mechanic, works really well. Um, as I said, the game looks beautiful, the map looks beautiful, the Vikings are um, very fun. Um, this whole thing about Vikings coming with their Viking ships to deliver gifts for Christmas uh, works really well, surprisingly. I love Vikings, everything about uh, the Norse cultures I'm a big fan of. So that's a very nice twist, because everybody knows Odin is actually Santa Claus, so that quite fits quite well in this uh, game. So a uh, very, very big surprise for me, this game, and uh, quite a nice surprise, enjoyable very much. And I'm probably going to do a playthrough next Christmas. Uh, I'll try not to be lazy again, and uh, we'll see how it plays. But for now, I definitely recommend you try it out. This is Giftbringer. All right, next game. This is number eight, Bargain Basement Bathysphere. So I think everybody pretty much heard at least about this game. Uh, probably most of you already played it. If you haven't, why not? Definitely play this game. You have to. This is a must try. So uh, Bargain Basement Bathysphere, it's already been talked to talked about a lot. Um, you're rolling dice and you're moving your submarine down into the depths of the ocean. So how you move, um, just whatever you roll, you can move that many spaces down. Um, but you can also move back up, back down, back up, back down. And you're trying to hit these uh, spaces. If you go over them, then it hurts you in some way, either stress or damage. And, uh, of course, you have oxygen every time we roll. So um, it, the game itself... Um, it's quite simple, but very interesting, very exciting, because uh, at some point during your trip down, you have to make a decision to turn back and go back to the surface before you die, and it creates a very nice push your luck game. But what makes this game special is uh, all this um, extra sheets that create a campaign mode. So I think there's like, I want to say 30, about 30 or so games that you can play through. And every time there's something new thrown at you, every every map is different, but also there's new rules. There's a little miniature games that you're trying to finish on the side. And um, yeah, just overall beautifully designed game quite well. Uh, it was my number one at some point, but I think I played it too much, so it kind of dropped down. Now the problem with the game is once after you play through the entire game uh, you have to print out everything again and then start from the beginning which is not as exciting as it is the first time and um, so more time you play through it you just have to print it again and then start from scratch so it's not quite as replayable as some of the games but uh, i mean after you finish the campaign once or twice but if you never played it before and this is your first time then this is the top-notch game this is definitely a game you have to try no matter what. So give it a shot. This is a Bargain Basement Bathysphere, my number eight. All right, moving on to my number seven. This is 1872, The Lost Crows. So this is another game from the XX72 series. And in my opinion, this is the best. So this game, unlike 1572, came out later and it's quite more polished, streamlined, and uh, this one works the best. So the basic um, dice mechanic is um, similar to what you've seen in Utopia Engine when you roll two dice and then you assign the numbers and you're trying to make the top and the bottom die um, equal to somewhere around the middle, around three, four, two, three, four. Um, if you have less than two, then it's going to be really bad. If you have five or more, then it's going to be also really bad. So uh, you're trying to get this all balanced out and place the dice in the best possible area and then collect movement points, move across the map and uh, map it out just like in the uh, 1572. Um, so this game also has some choose your own adventure kind of uh, aspects in the 
rulebook where once you reach one of these plot points, for example, A, you're going to read the text, it's going to tell you what happens, and then you make a decision whether you want to do this or you want to do that. And then depending on that, you're going to go to a different paragraph, read it, and so the story unfolds. And as you go through the map, mapping it out, um, bad stuff happens. There's some uh, cavalry chasing you, and uh, you, of course, need to worry about the food and morale and stuff like that. Uh, and you're trying to reach uh, way up here on the north, somewhere in Canada. So when it comes to XX72, as I said, the best game. Uh, but very polished, very streamlined, uh, a lot of nice elements that add a little bit replayability, like filling out these crows with different colors that unlock some spiritual abilities that are going to help you immensely. And uh, overall, just a basic dice mechanic and movement works quite well. So this is a top-notch game, the best out of XX72 in my opinion. So if you have not tried it, definitely try it out. And that is my number seven. 1872 the lost all right folks moving on to my number six this is the harbinger project so i absolutely love this game i think this is the most underrated uh game ever especially when it comes to the roll and write so this is kind of a war game and the interesting part about this game is that you're rolling the dice and you're deciding what to do so you can uh, get some more troops, um, try to decipher where the enemy is going to attack, and stuff like that. So you have a lot of things you can do, but um, very little time. So at any time, you're going to roll, and if you roll the right number, for example, here 8, but here 6, 7, or 8, or 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So as the time goes by, it's more likely that enemy is going to strike. So you have a very limited time, but you don't know how much, and you have to do a lot of things to repel this attack, but you can't do everything because the time is running out. So you're rolling the dice, you're trying to decide, and it's a very hard decision what to do, and um, you do as much as you can, and then the enemy strikes and you see what happens. So um, very, very fun game, very interesting game, highly underrated. So if you have not tried the Harbinger Project, I definitely uh, recommend that you at least try it once to see if it's for you or not, because I think maybe the, the war games and uh, these very thinky, strategic kind of games, they don't really uh, appeal to everybody. They're not fun for everybody, but if it is something that you might enjoy, then you're going to love this game. So try this one out at least once. This is the Harbinger Project, my number six. All right, we made it to top five. And here on uh, my number five is the D6 Shooters. I really love this game. Um, I think it's mostly because of the theme, because it comes out very nicely. Uh, this is the game where you're trying to escort a certain criminal from one city all the way to Reno, where he's going to be on trial, probably hanged. And uh, yeah, the theme is great. So you roll the dice and uh, similar to Dice of the Living Dead. So some dice are bad, some are good, and you're trying to roll them, re-roll them until you get uh, the most of what you need. And some dice give you movement, some give you food and stuff like that so uh, you're trying to gather movement and move through this long path you can stop at some cities resupply play poker get some more gold um, there's also events that there's a whole list of events that you're going to roll for see what happens so very thematic game i think even for such a simple premise such a pr simple uh, mechanic but it comes through very nicely and it's a blast to play so if you have not tried the D6 shooters. This is a definitely game you must try because um, it's so much fun. So that's my number five, the D6 shooters. All right, moving on. This is my number four, Hall of the Dwarven King. Uh, last year it was my number one, so definitely a top-notch game. I really love this game. Um, you're trying to dig through the ground into the mine and then build the structures that the dwarves build especially the throne room i think the most important right there for the dwarven king and of course you're gonna roll seven dice uh snow white and the seven dwarves so seven dice and each die is a dwarf and then you have to get the certain dwarves some dwarves give you points some dwarves give you a chance to build something 
stuff like that and you can re-roll as much as you want but of course you're gonna lose some dice if you if you're re-rolling a lot and um, get as many points as possible so what's great about this game is um, you can build right away and build as much as you can but if you dig deeper then the buildings are gonna earn you more points so it becomes kind of a race to dig down deep as fast as you can and build but the time goes by if you're just digging you're not earning any points or you can just uh, cut your losses and score some of these lower dwarfs that just give you um, straight up points so it's a very nice uh, tactical game strategic game that you have to play and decide what to do with each dwarf that you uh, have um, just use the ones you have or re-roll try to get something else while losing some dice so very fun game very very uh, uh, interesting strategic game so if you have not tried this it was my number one uh, drop down a little bit because uh, some games just kind of rose to the top so it kind of left it a little bit lower but still my number four and number one my last year so highly recommended hall of the dwarven king my number four and here we are with my number three this is paleontologists so this is a brand new game for me and i love this game this is game this is a game that's just absolutely wonderful i spend so much time playing it and just thinking about it strategizing i, I think i spend more time just drawing little shapes and trying to figure out the best way to go about it than i actually did playing the game which for me is the uh, feature of an excellent game so in this game you're going to roll two dice and pick one shape and pick one pattern and then put that pattern and shape anywhere in the board and what you're trying to do is surround these bones and by doing so you dug them up and you get the points for each bone that you dig up but if the bone is surrounded by just a single pattern in all the shapes that are around then you also get these little bonus points and of course you can use the dice for special abilities that let you manipulate the dice or add a single square or some extra points and by that you're trying to maximize the score as much as possible um, absolutely wonderful game strategically top-notch uh, fun definitely uh, i highly recommend this game and um, i won't be doing the playthrough because one player has it but you can check his out um, and yeah not much to say top-notch game definitely try it out paleontologists my number three all right here we are my number two this is dungeons of numera uh, the designer's mia it looks like the game is abandoned it's not getting an entry in the in the board game geek database but such a good game such a shame that the designer didn't just keep going with it create more maps and stuff like that we played this game so much we played it in the solo showdown um i love it every time i play it it's such a great game um what you're trying to do is you roll three dice and then enter those numbers here starting from the entrance and you're trying to move over to these two uh, treasure chests now what you have to do is each number has to be um, higher than the one below it in the column but you can't repeat numbers in the row so it creates a very nice kind of sudoku like feeling when you're filling out the um, dungeon and moving through the dungeon but also if you fill out the whole dungeon with the numbers that add up exactly to whatever these numbers are for each color for example if you're all your numbers add up to 18 then you score how many numbers you have in the room so that's extra points so it's wonderful puzzle game wonderful so it has the sudoku element it has this kind of a trying to match each of these numbers fill it out so it's very mathematical but also you're trying to go through the dungeon and uh, get these keys so you can unlock the doors because if you can't unlock the doors then you can't fill numbers here and you might get in a situation where you can't fill anything out and your game is over uh, you have these keys you have to collect as I said and also skulls that lose you points if you um, can't enter the number anywhere and some special abilities that you can use so to get a really high score you have to really make a nice solid plan you have to be able to uh, figure out what numbers you need to enter into a room to make and match exactly to the number needed and just uh, go through the dungeon get the keys and um, get the treasure chests while trying to put the highest number as possible on the chest so um, when it comes to the roll and write games, I think this is one of the best puzzle games ever. And uh, overall, 
very fun game. You also have some um, events and some monsters that you can fight, which also add points and stuff like that. So if you have not tried this game, it's very underrated because it was just left in the work in progress section. It never got the Board Game Geek entry that it deserves. And uh, yeah, um, I love this game. I think everybody loves this game. <laughs> but as I said, since it's only been in the work in progress thread, um, not a lot of people have played it, so it's uh, overlooked, underappreciated for sure. So highly recommend this game. This is Dungeons of Numera. Definitely try it out. My number two. All right, folks, here we are at the top of the list. My number one. Can you guess what it is? No? Okay, here it is. This is Utopia Engine. Yes, Utopia Engine. Everybody knows about it. Everybody loves it. One of the best print and play games, roll and write games, um, even in general, one of the best games, I think. Um, everybody knows about it, as I said. So Utopia Engine, it wasn't so high on my list before. Um, now, the reason I stated is because it, it does go on a bit longer. It's a bit longer game. Um, maybe overstays its welcome a bit, too much dice rolling. But as I played it more and more, the more I fall in love with it um, every time. This game is top-notch, so well designed, uh, so simple in the mechanics, but um, the way the mechanics and all these little miniature games are tied in together to create this epic story of adventure, of, of just epic proportions, is, uh, is just great. I, um, it has never been done before because uh, this game is quite old and I don't think a lot of games come close to it even these days. So um, if you haven't, if you don't know what the game is about, uh, you roll two dice and you put them in one of these six squares and then you roll two more, put those two numbers, roll two more, put the last two numbers. You subtract the top and bottom and you're trying to get it as close as possible to zero and then you see what you found in the area. So you're going through these six areas trying to find the six pieces of Utopia engine that you're going to take back to your workshop, try to put them together and activate them. And if you manage to do all that, the U Utopia engine springs to life and um, prevents the doomsday, which is... Uh, slowly but surely coming your way. So um, the game, though simple to play and simple mechanics individually, but they're tied into this epic story of search and uh, trying to uh, save the world. So this game, the way it's uh, created, the way it plays, um, top notch. Definitely one of the best roll and write games I ever played. Um, and right now my number one. So if you have not tried Utopia Engine, this is a must try, highly recommended game. Um, check out my uh, playthrough to see um, how to play it, the basic strategy behind it. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Must try game, Utopia Engine, my number one. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. That's my uh, 20 top free roll and write games. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, any games that you think deserve to be on this list but are not. Uh, I have a lot of games to try still, and uh, of course some games I missed, so let me know. And uh, thank you all for watching, I'll see you all in the next video, and until then, take care.